Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And right now, Google's developer conference, Google I.O., is running. And there are a couple of announcements of interest to game developers, specifically around Flutter and some Flutter-based game engines. So we're going to take a quick look at all of those things today. First, we'll start with Flutter. This is a app kit. App, so kind of a combination of a UI framework and an SDK for developing apps uh, built on top of the Dart programming language. Originally, it was all about making mobile applications, but in more and more recent releases, they've been moving into the browser and into the desktop. That's a big part of what Flutter 3 is all about. So the whole idea behind Flutter is basically the same promise that we had back in the days of Java. You write your code once and run it on a multitude of devices. Uh, they do a pretty good job of it as well. As you can see, Flutter is actually used by a decent number of industries including Google themselves, BMW, eBay, Groupon, Tencent, Toyota, and so on. There's also some uh, game engine related announcements to go along with this. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, it is built on top of the Dart programming language. Dart is very similar in scope and functionality to Microsoft's TypeScript. I don't have a lot of familiarity with Dart, to be honest, so I can't really make a recommendation for or against it. Now, in terms of what is new in Flutter 3, well, the big thing, as I mentioned earlier on, is that desktop support. So three months ago, they announced support for Windows 3. Today, they have stable support for Mac OS and Linux in addition to Windows. So your major desktop platforms are all supported in addition to web and mobile. So getting your code running on a multitude of devices should be pretty solid. On the topic of, uh, so, so we've got those platforms there. And then on the topic of Mac, uh, they have menu and support for the Mac OS system bar now. And then they also have support for universal binary. So you can support the M1, uh, the, the Apple Silicon now, uh, which is Definitely nice if you're doing Mac development. On top of that, uh, there's IME or international text on all desktop platforms, accessibility on all desktop platforms. They deprecated support for Windows 7 and 8 for development. Development only uh, should still work as a runtime. Uh, you know what? Windows 7 slash 8 are getting less and less supported every day, it seems. It's like the world decided, yeah, we're done there. Uh, we got some updates on mobile folding, uh, folding phone support in here as well, including the Surface Duo emulator samples are available iOS variable refresh rate is supported, simplified re uh, iOS releases in there. Uh, they also sunsetted support for 32-bit versions of iOS, so iOS 9 and iOS 10 32-bit are being deprecated. Um, and a few other things here. Tools have been updated behind the scenes. Dart got an update. There were performance improvements in here. Uh, inline ads, this impeller uh, solution to address early onset jank on iOS and other platforms. You can preview an experimental render backend called impeller. Uh, Precompiles a smaller, simpler set of shaders at engine build time so they won't compile while an app is running. Uh, so again, gets rid of some of the, the flutter jank and can get you some pretty serious performance improvements as a result, uh, material three support, um, add support and so on. So that's what you can expect in this particular release. Now we're going to kind of get into the whole actual game side of things. They also released something called the flutter casual games toolkit. This is for creating, you know, very simple ish games. Let's say you were making chess or wordle or that kind of thing. That is what this kit is all about. Uh, it's already got integration with things like ads in app purchases, Firebase play services and game center. So basically all the Google stuff is integrated into it. The single code base, to write your iOS or Android app. It is entirely open source. So if you want to build your own game, there is a template available over on GitHub. There is documentation on getting you up and started. And there is also a Flutter game you can check out in Dartpad. And let's do that now. So here is the actual game. Now, interestingly enough, I don't think it actually works. Woo. I do not mean to leave the page. All right, let's, let's go back a page. Uh, but over here, you can see the actual code uh, behind the game. So this is what uh, Flutter code looks like. And here you can see it running. There's a number of samples, by the way, in Dart pads. So if you want to come in here and learn Dart, uh, they've got some Dart and some Flutter examples. You can, the code's over here. You can run them over here. You can make small tweaks, check them out in real time. So there is this new sample here for the game games where was actually, I, the weird thing is once you leave it i can't get it back uh but that there is the new dart racing game in here um and then on top of that the template is available it is open source so it is in the um samples template folder of the flutter repository itself flutter the whole thing uh is all open sourced i'm not 100 percent certain what license flutter is under i know it's one of the flexible bsd3 uh so it's under a flexible open source license so it should be usable in that regard uh in terms of Another release that they did here as part of this was Pinball. All the source code is available here. So this is for making kind of a more elaborate game using Flutter. And here, let's go ahead and check it out. So let's play this. Uh, this is available, by the way, at 
pinball.flutter.dev. And you can see here a more complex game created using Flutter. Now, this isn't using their simple um, game engine thing. So here we go. We got this isn't for the casual game kits. This is using another uh, Flutter based uh, game engine. I'll show you it in just a second. And here you go. So this is kind of a more advanced game that you can make using Flutter. Now this one, oops, I suck at pinball. Uh, this one will run across multiple devices. So you should be able to load this up in your phone and play it versus here and so on. So this is kind of a, an example of what you can do uh, with Flutter. It, this is entirely open source as well. This one is under the MIT license. I'm kind of curious why they switched license between BSD3 and MIT for this, this example, but uh, it is available on GitHub under the uh, Flutter pinball uh, repository. But this one used a different game engine, which I have covered in the past on this channel, and that is Flame. So Flame is a 2D game engine built on top of Flutter. It is pretty much the game engine, if I'm honest. If you want to do uh, Flutter game development beyond using the new casual toolkit, uh, that is um, probably Flame that you're interested in. So I'm just going to go ahead and, well, die. All right, so how do I get out of here? I'll just tab away. Uh, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the game engine behind the scenes. If you want to go ahead and check it out, uh, this one is entirely open source as well. I've done a video on this one in the past, so I'm not going to go into a lot more detail about Flame. But if you decide that you want to do some, you know, slightly more serious game development using the Flutter language uh, or Flutter ecosystem in the Dart programming language, Flame is probably the primary choice. But you now do have this other option here, uh, this casual games toolkit. This isn't technically a game engine. It is a set of examples and implementations and common kind of features you need for game development. Oh, I have my inspector open over here uh, for kind of creating casual style games. Um, but it's not really a full-blown game engine. So if you need more functionality, you need something more than uh, you know, game services integration and the typical, you know, UI layer that is provided by Flutter, you're going to probably want to go ahead with something like Flame. But this is an interesting new project because, again, all of those things that you might want to implement in your game uh, are hopefully integrated in there. Now, I don't know. So, so it's single code base for iOS and Android. Uh, but you've got implementation with Play Service, but I don't know if that necessarily means iOS service. So it looks like they're integrating their own services in there. So if you want to use um, the Apple equivalent, I don't know if you're going to end up having to roll that all yourself or if this will eventually be part of the uh, Flutter or Casual Games Toolkit. But anyways, that is the crux of the announcement at Google I.O. A decent number of new things in Flutter 3, but the biggest thing, obviously, is the fact that it is now supported on multiple platforms. Officially, uh, you got Silicon support on the M1 Max side of things, which is, I suppose, a nice development, and some other uh, kind of upgrades and features there. Plus, of course, we have the new Flutter Casual Games Toolkit in there, and then you can check out that pinball example if you want to see what kind of games you could create with something like Flutter and Flame. Let me know what you think. Do you use Flutter? Do you use Dart? Do you like using both of them? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.